What up guys, how you doing? My name is TJ and today I have the pleasure of reviewing one of my all-time favorite anime. It's truly an S-ranked top-tier anime, Samurai Champloo. Now I tried to hit y'all with a moving drip, you know what I'm saying? The real ones know, the real ones know. Now I really feel like this is a timeless anime, which is also why it's one of my favorites. Originally aired in 2004, this is an urban styled anime based in the Edo period of ancient Japan. So just to get right into it, it follows the storyline of three characters, our first being Fu. Now Fu is a tea shop waitress taken in by an elderly couple who owns a tea shop. Her dad, who is a samurai, ended up leaving her when she was younger with her mother by herself and then her mother ended up dying a couple years later. So with this anime, she actually enlists the help of Mugen, our second character. Now Mugen, this man is a savage. This man is truly a savage. He's always rowdy, always on go, ready to leave, feeling froggy. He's a former pirate from the Ryukyu Islands. Now you have to watch the anime to know how savage these people are, but all I'm gonna say is I feel like he's the Japanese version of a hood nigga. Now he's the complete opposite of our last character, but not the least is Jin. Jin, he is my favorite character of all time. He's a man of little words. Now, he's actually the oldest and most mature out of the three of them, and the only one trained in Kenjutsu, which is an ancient samurai fighting style. Growing up in his dojo, he was actually the sweetest and nicest person there. But when I say that Jin is sweet, he ain't sweet. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he about it. He's a man of little words, and you know how men of little words be acting out here. That's all I'm gonna say. And to give you a little bit more about his character, him and his sensei actually end up getting into it. And I don't wanna spoil the story, but he's my favorite for a reason. And that's all I'm gonna say, he's my favorite for a reason. We start off with Fu, who is just working a regular, regular shift in the tea shop she's serving all these men and they're kind of just a little bit rowdy you know a couple of them are causing trouble interrupting the customers all around them being loud being annoying and she's just like not feeling it now as a former server i completely understand that feeling there's nothing worse than having the ratchetest of the ratchet in your section knowing they're not about to tip you knowing that they want to take up all your time and energy just to leave your section a mess when you could be getting money from other tables that is annoying. Now we're not gonna profile. I'm not gonna call these people thugs and, and criminals, but look, if you acting like it and the shoe fit, what else am I supposed to say? So, in walks, while all this rowdiness is happening, in walks Mugen. Now I told you guys that this man is a savage. Mugen literally walks in and all he has to say for himself is water. And Fu's like, excuse me? And he has the nerve to repeat himself. He literally says again, just water. Not, hi, how are you? Not, hey, can I get a menu? What are the specials? He just says water. And she's like, um, well, sir, this is a whole entire establishment. So if you're not a paying customer, you got to get on up out of here. Like, we don't serve broke niggas. And that's real broke nigga energy that you're giving right now. And he's just like, all right, all right, all right. I get it. I get it. I see that you're having trouble here. There's some rowdy people up in here. Let me help you out. I will get rid of these people for you for 50 dumplings. And fools like 50 dumplings. How about 20? And this man literally is like, I wouldn't go a dumpling lower. Like, excuse me, what? First of all, you came in here asking for a water cup. Secondly, how are you going to barter when you don't have no money? You literally don't have no money and she's offering you 20 free dumplings and you won't settle for anything less than 50? You're broke! Settle for what you can get for free! Like, I don't get that. So anyway, we go over to Jin, who's coming in from West Bubble Pub from forever he's coming from. And he's just walking through town, enjoying his day, and he sees the governor. Now the governor is a really corrupt and terrible man. He has raised taxes on the entire town, and now these people can't pay. Now. Jin, like I said, is an honorable samurai. He sees the governor about to clap this man. Like literally, he has his money sprawled out on the ground. And he's like, please, sir, this is all I have. It's my life savings. And the governor is like, bro, I ain't trying to hear all that. Run me my money. I don't care. 
So then Jin, who's like not gonna stand for this, is about to like take out the governor and his bodyguards. And one of the people next to him is like, oh, bro, bro, chill out, chill out. You haven't heard about his bodyguards? And Jin's just like, was I supposed to? And the guy's like, yeah, they're the elite la la las. And Jin's like, all right, bruh, there's nothing I can't stand more than a person who can't think for himself and all these other honorable things. And he just starts bodying the bodyguards, just literally left and right, ching, 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 ching. And this is why Jin is my favorite, because after he gets right with the bodyguards, he literally goes up to the old man who proclaimed that this is his life savings on the ground, picks up his coins, and he's like, this is for my services. <laughs> like, bro, how are you going to help this man and rob this man at the same time? But look, he a cool dude. He's a cool nigga. What more can I say? So, back at the tea shop. Mugen is in there getting right. Like he's getting rid of these like guys left and right, chopping an arm off there, breaking fingers there. Just he's handling his business. And all of a sudden, one of the guys starts laughing in Mugen's face. He literally just ha 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 belly laughing. And Mugen's like, mm, what's up with you? And he's like, oh, you just don't get it. You don't get it. I am the governor's son, and what I say goes my word is law around here and people who treat me like you do don't live to tell the tale first of all i hate niggas like that you're pussy you're soft because what are you even talking about like my daddy did it no i don't need all that talkity talk one of them hands my boy and that's exactly what Mugen does he literally is just like bro what are you even talking about and he walks up to the governor's son and grabs his hand and he's like y'all got five fingers to get on up out of here and everyone's like five fingers and he's like uh-huh five fingers and he takes his fingers and he's just like crack crunch break and then on the fourth finger Jin walks in now Jin literally is like and the guys are just like and then the governor's son goes you must be one of my dad's bodyguards thinking he's about to get saved and Jin is like Actually, uh, no, I, I didn't know y'all was boxing here, you know what, my bad, I'm gonna head on out, and just to answer your question, no, I'm not, I just bodied those niggas and they're dead, so, bye, and he, <laughs> he's about to walk out, and then movie like, oh, you, you single-handedly body all those elite la-la-la bodyguards, and Jin is like, what up? And all of a sudden, Mugen lunches at Jin, and they start getting right. Now, I could try to explain the slight scene to you guys, even though I couldn't do it justice. But this is just something that you're going to have to watch on your own. You're going to have to watch the anime to truly understand how right these men are getting. The fight scene is clean. It's clean. And for me to try to sit here and explain to you how cleanly this really is, would just do it in injustice. So just go ahead and watch. Now... While all this is happening and they're fighting, all of a sudden one of the guys that Mugen had taken out in the tea shop previously, he comes back, his arm's missing, he's all bloody, and he has like a fiery cloth in his hand and he starts to set fire to the tea shop. And so they're fighting, the tea shop's on fire, the mayhem is happening, and then all of a sudden Mugen and Jin get captured by the governor. Bum, 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 bum. And the governor is literally like, oh y'all done messed up. Y'all have messed up. You made a big mistake because that fire killed my son. He got trapped inside and couldn't escape. You may be able to get out of this with your lives if you beg for them. And Mookin's just like, bruh, I am not trying to do all that. I would rather die. And Jin's just like, what he said. Like, how cool? Uh, how cool is Jin? Like, what he said? Like, come on. A man of little words. And a man truly after my own heart. So anyway, while all this is happening, Fu, because the tea shop was her life, she doesn't have any other family, she finally decides she knows what she wants to do. And the first step to that is helping Mugen and Jim escape from this prison. So she goes up to the bodyguards that's guarding their cell, and she's like, please, sir, let me see the prisoners. And the bodyguard's just like, bro, like, no, nobody's allowed to see the prisoners. What are you even talking about? And she's like, please, I'll do anything. And the guy's like, anything which to me is just like bro ew why is it when a lady walks up to any man of authority and is like please i'll do anything it's automatically like a sexual favor like what if i was just trying to make you lunch or watch the kids 
You know what I'm saying? Like, why is it always something gross? Men are trash, men are trash. That's the moral of the story. Men are trash. Anyway, she ends up finessing the key out of this man and then tries to get moving and Janelle and breaks the key in the lock. Like, uh, I don't want to say that Fu always sells the tea, but I don't know, man. She can work at DSW with all those selling skills. But somehow, execution day rolls around and it's it. Moving and Jin are about to get clapped. Literally, the guy has the sword over their heads, about to slash it down. And then all of a sudden, Mugen jumps out of the way, knocks the sword at the, out of the guy's hand, cuts his ropes, and then Jin uses the same sword that got knocked out of the guy's hand to cut his ropes. And they start getting down with the bodyguards again. And it is so clean. I just, I can't explain it to you guys how dirty these fight scenes were. Like, they were getting right. Like, ting, 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 all over the place and during all of this craziness chaoticness Fu somehow gets a firecracker bomb throws it in there and is able to help Mugen and Jin escape and so she's like y'all 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 I helped y'all get out of that I literally saved your life and because I saved your life you guys both owe me and my one favor is that you have to help me find the samurai that smells like flowers like, you guys, is that not crazy? I feel like I'm out of breath. Like, oh, so much is happening. So, whether or not you want to watch this, I don't know, but I think it's worth it. And I've actually compiled a custom rating system just to go ahead and give you guys that little nudge on why you should watch this. So, I've, I've got a little system here. Let me explain it to you. Our first is character development. Now, this is really important. Second, storyline third theme because what anime do you know that has a trash theme but is good or vice versa theme is very important when you're into the anime world okay it chooses you you don't choose it and then lastly plot slash boxometer because we're all inclusive on this end not every anime is gonna have boxing in it but that doesn't mean y'all don't need to watch there are still really good animes that are just storyline and plot and you you should give it a try, you know what I'm saying? This one, luckily, has the boxing in it, and they are getting dirty. So, let's start with character development. I think it's pretty good. All overall, you do see Mugen become less of an asshole. Jin, he comes out of his shell, he speaks more, he gets funnier and food. I mean, she's pot. She's pot. She, she just adds a little switch up to the scenes every now and again. Also, secondly, storyline. Now, what can I say from an anime that's 26 episodes? It's not long, so you know there's going to be no fillers. It's going to get straight to the point. And not only that, it doesn't lead you on into just, you know how sometimes animes just give you that stupidity and it, it just makes the storyline like OP and one character is just like all they focus on? No. This storyline perfectly intertwines the three of their characters together, get good background on all of them. It's super interesting and very binge worthy. Now when it comes to theme song, I know y'all have heard the Samurai Champloo OST. It's OP. I listen to it in the car, in the shower. I mean, I know niggas who have made lo-fi remixes to it. If you go to SoundCloud right now and type in Samurai Champloo lo-fi chill mix, you're gonna find like 85 pop-ups. Like, people love it. It's worth it. I'm sure you've heard it. You've had to have. Now, lastly, our plot slash box on meter. I've been telling y'all this whole time. Even in the first episode, Moving and Jin fighting against each other. Like, how crazy is that? They are both S-ranked fighters. And they have beaten everyone they've come across except for each other. How are you going to be my partner and my biggest adversary? It's crazy in here. You guys have to watch. You guys have to watch. They be getting right. It, it's good. It's really good. In the entire time, they have like this rivalry where they're just like, I could kill you, but also I'm going to save you because you're kind of my pal. We love that. Overall, we're giving this anime a 9 out of 10. You want to know why? 
it's perfect for beginners stick to the story there's boxing the character development is great the storyline is great and all i'm gonna say is this came out in 2004 do y'all know what y'all was doing in 2004 now i don't know math but i was born in 1996 i'm 23 now uh, 2004 like what what was happening britney spears my little pony i, I don't know all i'm saying is People are still talking about this anime to this day. And that's for a reason, to this day. Go ahead and watch it. Give this video a like if you liked my review. Leave a comment on other shows that you guys would like us to review. Me and the guys on this channel have our own personal stuff and a lot more amazing things coming. And thank you so much for watching this review. Go ahead and give us a follow, like, and subscribe. You guys have a great day.